Bull, all right, Minnesota Vikings, meet your returning defensive tackle. And his name is Sheldon Richardson. Sheldon Richardson is back in purple and yellow as a Minnesota Viking. All right, he was, um, yeah, Nate, he played for the uh, Minnesota Vikings before. You know, he uh, he played with them, I believe, around 20, we were in the playoffs. So I believe it was around 20, it was 2018. He spent with the Minnesota Vikings. And he totaled 47 pressures and five sacks during his tenure. And the Vikings brought in, um, they're actually, it's kind of a complicated situation with the defensive tackles this year, Nate. They brought in uh, Dalvin Tomlinson. And then uh, last year, they ended up signing Michael Pierce. But Michael Pierce didn't play last year because of uh, the COVID situation. He decided to opt out. But um, yeah, they, he, he was a Minnesota Viking in 2018. And I think he did a really good job for us. I was really excited about this pick when we got him in 2018. And I'm just as excited now because Sheldon Richardson really did do a decent and good job with the Minnesota Vikings. Um, a little bit about him. He was selected uh, 13th overall to the New York Jets in 2013. And he was named NFL's Defensive Rookie of the Year that season. He earned a Pro Bowl berth in 2014. And he set a career best with eight sacks and played four seasons and all with the franchise before he was traded to the Seattle Seahawks in 2017. And in his eight year uh, career as an NFL veteran, he has had 31 sacks, 10 forced fumbles and 460 tackles in his career. Now, let me start off with this first name concerning the fact that um, uh, this is my, this is uh, this guy going to my team. But before I do, the source for this article is uh, Courtney Cronin, ESPN staff writer. So I'll start off with this first, but before I do, I, I forgot to mention I, last year, he uh he spent last year with the Cleveland Browns. He signed um he signed a three year thirty six million dollar deal with the Cleveland Browns. He had two seasons with the Cleveland Browns before he was released earlier this off season. And he started thirty one games with the Browns. And he and he had a uh, four and a half sacks uh, during the twenty twenty season. And he was released in April, and that ended up creating eleven million dollars in cap space for the Cleveland Browns. So let me start off with this first. First of all, welcome back, Sheldon Richardson. You know. Uh, I have good memories of him with the Minnesota Vikings because, and the reason why I say that, Nate, is when he came, I can't remember or not, but um, it was around the time where I believe they still had Lin Yeah, they still had Linval Joseph. So it was him and Linval Joseph at the time, and they were two good defensive tackles. They really were. And Sheldon Richardson, again, it, has he been as good as he was with the New York Jets? No, but he still is producing at a very high level, which is why I'm glad to have this guy on the team. Now, it's a very complicated situation with the Minnesota Vikings uh, defensive tackle room because coming because when I, I, I've been following the Vikings a lot, obviously, it's my team. When I look at them, I always thought to myself, like the two defensive tackles this year we're going to be starting were Michael Pierce and Dalvin Tomlinson. That's it. I didn't think there was going to be anybody else. But now you add Sheldon Richardson to this. And now it turns into a more complicated situation. But here's why I like it. It's because it's not like other teams where you're stacked in one position and you just add to it, you know? It's not like that. Because when you're stacked in a position, Nate, it's already got competition in it. So you don't need to add more, you know? Like, it's kind of like with the it's kind of like with the New York Yankees, you know? They had such a great pitching staff and then they added Garrett Cole. Does he help? Absolutely. But again, do you really, like, you have such a great pitching staff as it is. Do you really? Like, was that really the most, the, the biggest need for you guys? No. So it's the same, but this, this is a different case because of those two defensive tackles. They thought that they, again, they, uh, um, excuse me, Pearson Tomlinson thought that they were going to come in and they were going to be the instant starters, but then Sheldon Richardson comes in. What that does is that creates competition and competition. It proves who's the, again, sometimes it proves who is the better player. You know, it proves who is sometimes the clutch player because you got to fight for your spot. You know, that's why rookies are so hungry to get in there. And that's why, and that's why, again, I feel like veterans are good time and time again, because you got guys competing for their spot. So it's as simple as that. You got guys who are competing to be alongside them. Same thing with this. I love competition, Nate, in sports, you know, and this adds to the competition. But when you over, when you, when you add uh, too much competition, that's when it becomes a problem. But for the Vikings in the defensive tackle room, I don't think it's that big of a problem. Because again, it's those three and only and two out of three of them are going to start. And the third one might come in occasionally, but I do like this signing, whether he is going to be a starting defensive tackle or whether he's just going to come in in between uh, reps and end up um, and contribute there. I don't mind. I, I do like this name and I do like the way my team is looking defensively. I think they are looking bright. You know, I think they are. I do like the fact that they have been add, adding a lot of veterans. You know, we added uh, Patrick Peterson this off season. Um, you add Rashad Breland, who's been an eight year, uh, I believe he's been in the league for eight years. 
same thing with Sheldon Richardson, a veteran like that. There's a lot of veterans on the Minnesota Vikings. There's a lot of veterans on the Minnesota Vikings defense that can really help. But we do have that mixture of veterans and very, very young guys as well. So I do feel optimistic about it. As for Sheldon Richardson, Nate, I've always been a fan of Sheldon Richardson. I always, I always felt like he has been a very, very good defensive tackle. Again, do I feel like he's he was as good as where he was with the New York Jets? No, but who's to say that he can't go back to that? You know, you know who's to say he can't go back to that again? But um, regardless, I am glad that he's back with the team. I I did enjoy his time with the Vikings in 2018. It was a very entertaining time around there. And again, with that being said, I do wish Sheldon Richardson the absolute best of luck. And again, I hope that he can contribute into helping the Vikings win a Lombardi trophy and bringing that Green Bay Packer coach trophy to Minnesota where it belongs. So with that being said, um, I wish Sheldon Richardson the best of luck in Skull Vikings. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What's that supposed to be? Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'll, I'll just mess it up. But anyway, uh, congratulations to Sheldon Richardson on joining back with his former team. Uh, going back to what you said about the competition, you're seeing that a lot in, in the NFL now, Mar. You look at the same situation at quarterback. Same thing with the Eagles. Um, I know with the Saints, it's um um Taysom Hill and help me out here, Jameis Winston. They're they're fighting for the QB position. And in Philadelphia, you got um Jalen Hurts and I think it's Joe Flacco, right? Uh, yeah, yeah, they, yeah, they just traded Joe for Flacco. Joe Flacco. Yeah, but then um, there's, other, there's other cases too. Like you got um. I'm trying to think. San Francisco with um, Trey yeah, Lance no. and Jimmy G. Yeah. And that's, that's more complicated, too. though. And there's a lot of cases, too, when, like, you look at, like, kind of, like, wide receivers and stuff like that. Like, I yeah. can't name them all. But, like, there, there's those cases as well, you know? Right, yeah. And like you said, I like the competition because at the end of the day, it goes to show you who's the more – um, who's the more superior or more in this case better player you know right and within that in a, in a sense within that in system, a sense right within that system it depends every player works differently with a difference at every system. right absolutely absolutely you know and that's and that's something I feel like a lot of a lot of fans seem to forget you know some some players you know I look at Jameis Winston's situation you know he wasn't that good in Tampa Bay all right go to New Orleans you know he may he may fan out to be better you know and and you know what I mean? Look at Sam Donald's situation. You know, a lot of people call him a bust, but here's the thing. If you're drafted by the New York Jets and you're under Adam Gase's leadership, do you honestly think you're going to be a better player? No, because it's Adam Gase who should have never been a head coach in the NFL. He's in Carolina with a better system. He can prove himself to be a better quarterback. You know what I mean? Only time can tell because he hasn't played his first game with the black and blue, but still, you know what I mean? He's being put in a better situation. I feel like a lot of, I feel like a lot of football fans or, or sports fans in general – tend to not understand that. You know, some some players fan out better in certain teams and certain aspects than others. That's just that. Some players just get used to it and play at an elite level like Tom Brady, you know. Look at what he did in, in uh, New England for 20 seasons. Then he goes to Tampa Bay and he does exactly what he's been doing. So some players are just built differently like that. Other players are just different. You know, so I I, I figured I'd mention that because some, some fans do tend to forget about that. But going back to Sheldon Richardson, like you said about the veteran uh, situation in Minnesota, I think that's a good thing, you know, because like you said, you got, like like you said, there's a lot of young players in that team and on all teams in general that need that veteran presence to reach that elite level, you know. I think having a veteran just makes a team that much better. But regardless, um, the Vikings are looking to be a pretty good team this year. They're, they're playing against the Panthers this year in Carolina, so I'm hoping we, you and I can go to that game. With that being said, um, best of luck to Sheldon Richardson uh, going back to Minnesota. You know, best of luck to them as well. And we'll see what happens with the team.